Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Guided Meditations and More. My name is Ade Richardson and this is normally a daily 7.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time Guided Meditation. Uh, as many of you know, I've, I've also been hosting interviews with various types of people on a variety, uh, a variety of topics. And today we're uh, joining us is Andrew Eastman and um, the topic is relationships, um, how to have uh, conscious ones and um, healthy relationships. And uh, uh, Andrew actually wrote a great ebook. I don't know if that's going public soon or if it's already public, but um, we'll talk. We'll get into that, and and, and we'll, we'll we're really going to go deep into this topic. So I thought uh, first I'd start off by reading Andrew's bio. Andrew Eastman is a life, dating, and relationship coach who helps single men to find, get, and keep conscious, fun, loving relationships with the woman of their dreams. He does that by helping them to build an authentic confidence and command of their lives through a whole holistic approach involving psychology, spirituality, and trauma relief techniques. Well, welcome, Andrew. Thank you for joining joining us today. Um, I, I hope everyone's not hearing the kids screaming and yelling in, in the background. <laughs> they're they're playing. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, where should we start? Um, let's start with the uh, uh, the ebook. Can you talk sure. to us a, a little bit about that? Like what? How did you come up with um, what inspired you to to write the book? Sure, sure. Uh, well, and first of all, thank you for having me, Ade. Uh, it's exciting to be here and and to I'm um, honored to participate in in one of these with you. So. Um, I was inspired to write the ebook as a part of a greater mission uh, that <clears throat> that it spawned out of my own, uh, you know, my own personal development, my own experience with relationships, um, my own, you know, deep inner exploration uh, into healing a whole lot of junk that um, that I was dealing with and. So, you know, uh, being that this is a, you know, sort of spiritual centric um, uh, entity gu guided my meditations and more uh, that, that, you know, that, that this audience is familiar and acquainted with the spiritual end of things, spirituality um, and psychology have really been godsends in uh, creating profound healing and change in my life. And uh, so, you know, uh, I spent a great deal of my younger life uh, in unhealthy relationships and really struggling to figure out why and uh, to understand what it is that I was doing wrong. And for quite a while there thinking what it is that was wrong with me uh, and you know, ultimately then recognizing and, and realizing that there wasn't anything wrong with me, uh, but that I was just rather seeing the world and myself from a, a very narrow and kind of limited framework. So, you know, I, I, um, I basically, uh, I started to recognize that like, there's gotta be something more, you know, like the anxiety, the depression, the struggles with relationships, the feeling like it makes sense to me to do one thing, but then when I would do that thing, it would cause, a, you know, another thing to fall apart. And uh, so ultimately, like, I just, I really got committed, convicted to figuring it out. Can you talk a little bit more, more about that part? Like, um, you would, you would focus on one thing and then uh, another thing would fall apart. What do you mean by that? Sure, sure. So uh, I, you know, so let me, let me answer that question by giving a little bit of context. My coaching, I started out as just a general life coach, coaching men, women, really anyone, and addressing a lot of different issues. And 
ultimately in the long run, I intend on coaching men and women as well. But being a man, uh, I, you know, I set out to making sense of the, the male perspective uh, in, in relationships and in life. And so that is the reason for me, you know, offering my services at, at current to the, um, you know, the demographic of, of men. So with that context, uh, what I, in answer to your question, what I would run into was it made sense in my mind. So men are very logic minded beings. Uh, you know, we, we think very rationally, we see things, um, you know, we, we see things kind of superficially and it's not a bad thing. We get a lot done. We're, we're very, you know, we're fixers. We're solution oriented. We're, we're creatures that want to get shit done. And, uh, and women, as you're probably familiar on the other hand, tend, and, and then of course, these are, these are generalities I'm making. Not everyone's like this, but generally speaking, uh, women on the other hand are much more feeling centric. They're much more emotional. And so what would happen is I'd get into relationships and I would fall head over heels because it just felt so nice to be loved by someone and to love them. And I hadn't, I hadn't dissected any of the, you know, the background psychology of what was really going on in that. So, uh, you know, really without any, any knowing what I'm doing, I just dove in head first. And I think a lot of guys do this. They dive into their relationships head first. They fall so deeply in love and women do this as well too. But what ends up happening is us guys, tend to go way overboard in terms of, uh, you know, laying it on. And, yeah. um, and what happens is, uh, so what I like to also set up is that everyone is looking to be safe. So as you know, humans are basically operating on uh, one of two tracks. They're either operating on love or they're operating on fear. And, uh, and so most of us, unfortunately, and unconsciously, not, not something that we're even aware of, are operating on fear quite extensively. And so what ends up happening is uh, we're all looking for, we're all looking to feel safe. And where we get misguided when we haven't, um, you know, when we haven't uh, had the, the proper learning we haven't had the opportunity to, to become conscious of, of some, you know, some deep existential truths. We go looking for safety outside of ourselves. Yep. Yeah. So we, we go, we get into relationships because, because they feel so dang good. And the reason they feel so dang good is because they make us feel so dang safe. Yeah. And I, I you know, I just want to comment on that because that's one of the things in, in your ebook, the ebook that really resonated you know, that you, I'm so happy that you pointed that out because I, I've read and I've seen some relationship, um, you know, talks and things of that nature, but they didn't really go into this aspect of it, you know, that connecting that, that, you know, desire to feel safe, you know, that that's a, that's a really important point, you know, because I've, I've done that like in every relationship. You know, and then there's the flip side of that, which I'm sure you're going to uh, go into where, where, where that person, you know, you, that person is not making you feel safe anymore. <laughs> totally. totally. Well, and so what happened and, you know, and this, this, that question of, of, of you asking about like doing one thing and then having it cause a, another thing to happen. What happens with guys is we you know, we want to feel safe. So we get in the relationship, it makes us feel safe. We don't realize that we're actually the ones making ourselves feel safe, not the relationship. But we think that the relationship is making us feel safe. And so then we get really clingy. And we get really needy. And we really need the relationship to feel okay. And what ends up happening is, all of a sudden, our, our partners, our, our girlfriends, or, or even boyfriends, or, or wives, husbands, but for the sake of this, we'll keep it with men to women. Um, you know, our girlfriends or our wives go, well, why does this guy need me so badly? Like him needing me feels like he is incomplete. 
So I like to also talk about completeness. And in that safety, we all want to, we all want to feel complete. And I like to use the words, you know, safe and complete synonymously, because basically we're looking for that, you know, that completion to happen. And when we're incomplete, um, basically what that does is the wife, the wife or the, the girlfriend starts to go, well, well, this guy, you know, this guy isn't the full deal. He's not a full package. Like he needs me to be complete. And while consciously they're maybe not thinking this subconsciously, what's happening is their, their natural law of attraction is going, this guy is not safe because this guy needs me to be okay. And I don't want to be with a guy who isn't okay without me because that isn't safe for me. Ah, uh, yes. So, so what ends up happening, you know, you hear people talk about neediness and how neediness like crushes the deal. And, and that makes sense to people, but what they're not understanding is that on a deeper level, it has to do with safety. It has to do with the fact that when you are needy, you are basically saying, I'm not okay without you. I need you to be okay. And any woman is going to go, uh, sorry, bro. Like I need a man who like I can rely on to, to look to, to protect me. Cause she's doing the same thing. She's kind of going, I need you to be complete. I don't need somebody who's incomplete who, who, who then I know is not going to be able to complete me. So there's this funny dance that happens where everybody's trying to be complete uh, and not realizing that the only way that they can be complete is to recognize that they already are complete. So, so in other words, what ends up happening is I would shower them with love. I'd buy them flowers and write them songs and show up at their work thinking, oh, she's going to love this. I bought her a meal and I did this and I did that. And before you know it, she's talking to other guys, you know, or she's not returning my calls or, and these were in relationships that weren't marriages, but you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, I'm dating someone. And all of a sudden she starts, you know, ghosting me. And I couldn't understand. And, and, you know, I, I work with lots of men who come to me who, you know, I, I work with a lot of men who, whose marriages are on the outs. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're trying to save their marriage and they're, they're doing everything that they can to hold it together. They're working so hard to show her that, that they love her. And what I tell them is, bro, she knows that you love her. She knows that you love her so much that you're a mess without her. And that is not what she wants from you. So it's a really fascinating thing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that I, that I uh, explain that. But, but um, you know, to kind of tie it back to the ebook, the ebook is, is effectively my coaching program. And so what I did was I took my entire coaching program that I offer to men uh, it's a front to finish program where, you know, basically I like to explain it like, uh, think of yourself as an athlete. Um, you know, if you're an out of shape athlete, you're not going to perform very well. You're not going to, you're not going to have great, great chances of success in whatever sport it is that you do. So what do you, what do most athletes do in that, that instance? Well, they get busy training, but usually they wind up hiring a coach because they need somebody to say, ah, your form's a little off over here. You need to get back out. You need to get in the gym. I need you to do a hundred more pushups because you're kind of lazy. And so what my program is, is basically that, like I am a coach for men to get themselves back in shape uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically so that they come out the other end naturally attracting exactly what they want, not just women, but really all things in their life. So it's a full holistic life coaching program with the carrot. The carrot that I dangle at the end is the, the dream relationship because who doesn't want the dream relationship? Yeah. So, but, but they get more than they've bargained for, uh, obviously, because it sounds like it, they're they're uh, growing into a relationship with them with themselves as as well you know you yeah and Very when well. you talked about the um complete me and you know getting the flowers and doing all these things nothing's wrong with that but oh. if, if the if the desire behind the behind it is 
to, and I'll just talk about from, from uh, my perspective, because this is something that, you know, I've dealt with, um, you know, uh, throughout my journey, is seeking um, approval, you know, uh, from my partner. So everything I do is, you know, seeking that, seeking that approval, you know, and, and depending on that approval. And so when I get the approval, then, ah, oh, life is great. I could relax. There's that feeling of safety. But then when she may have, you know, maybe annoyed or, or whatever, or just want to, you know, offer some criticism, then I'm crushed. And then it's like, this person is the enemy. And, and for, for me, sometimes, you know, um, how do you deal with people where, um, they're so triggered that, you know, it, it kind of people with trauma. So let's say you have some trauma and, and that, and that's tied into this, um, you know, feeling of not feeling good enough. And, and so when your, your partner triggers you and you go into this kind of defensive sort of survival mechanism, can you talk a little bit of how you work with someone that might have that issue? Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, the way that I, the way that my program works is the, it's a five-step program and the ebook outlines all of this. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be offering the ebook basically for free. Um, and, and then, I, you know, then the coaching program is, is how I make a living. But, uh, what I do in the first two steps is I have, I, I, I basically have the person get into the gym, uh, but I have them get into the mental gym because what goes on when we have trauma and we are easily triggered, uh, the way that I like to explain this is, um, so, you know, and what works well is to, to bring in kind of a spiritual um, framework. So, you know, I, I like to look at it in the, the magic, with the magic number three, uh, you know, if you talk like mind, body, spirit, uh, you know, the Holy Trinity, there, there's always throughout all these different religions and spiritual teachings, there's, there's three, three components that work in tandem with one another that are very often um, way out of sync. And so those, those three parts are the mind, the body, and the spirit. And what ends up happening is uh, think of the mind like a dog. So the mind is a dog and the body is the backyard and the spirit is the owner. And the spirit is always going to be extremely kind and caring towards the mind and the body, towards the dog in the backyard, because it's kind of impartial about what it is that the body and the mind does, does because it knows that everything that it does or that those two do are leading it towards its awakening. They're leading it towards uh, recognizing that there's three. But what ends up happening in most humans is that the mind and the body are like, we don't need the master. Let's go play. And, uh, and so what ends up happening is the brain, you know, the brain, the dog is extremely disobedient. The brain, the dog, instead of learning to sit, stay, and be a good dog, the brain learns all kinds of junk because it just goes around all eager like a dog and it, you know, it wags its tail and then somebody smacks it and says, you suck, you know, on the playground or whatever, or mommy and daddy. So another thing that we can maybe talk about in a little bit, um, I'm a firm believer that every single human being has significant mommy and daddy issues. And, uh, and I can talk some more about that and how that impacts you. But for now to stay with this dog metaphor, so the dog picks up all this training and it's bad training. The dog learns that if it doesn't hold itself just right, that it's a bad dog. And then, and then when it, and then when it realizes it's a bad dog, it panics, it gets anxiety, it freaks out, it barks, it growls, it goes in the, it goes in the backyard and starts digging a hole. And this is where we get stress and, and, you know, abuse of the body. The dog abuses the yard, the, the brain abuses the body because it's so disobedient. And the soul, the spirit just sits back and watches the whole thing go on. But 
what happens when you start to awaken and, and get conscious and realize like that you actually aren't the mind and the body, you aren't the dog and you, you I mean, you are in a way, but that's really the vehicle that we're experiencing this, this life through. And that the one who's really in charge, the master is the soul and the soul is just waiting for you to, to realize that and go, okay, time to train this dog. Uh, then, so what I do with, with men is I have them, I have them get to work and we completely dissect their entire framework of life. Like I break them down and make them understand that the whole, all the ideas that they have up here are just bad training and all that anxiety and stuff that happens is just the result of bad training. And then when the bad training conflicts with itself, the dog chews up the backyard, you know, abuses the body. But when you can get back into the, the higher seat of consciousness and be the master of the dog and train the dog, no, sit, stay. No, I know this is a scary moment for you, but you're just going to sit. And we go through that process and you wind up, it, you know, it, it's like going to the gym. So you, you don't go to the gym once and you come out in your champion body. You got to do it every day because these, these, these trainings that the, the mind, the dog has gotten are deeply ingrained in it. And so we've got to undo those trainings and, and create new trainings. And that happens by doing it repeatedly every single day, which is where the coaching is so valuable because I'm there like a traditional coach. I give them a pat on the butt and say, get back out on the field. Like we're not done training. Uh, so I, I hope that was kind of a long-winded answer, but I hope that kind of answered your question for the trauma bit. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. And um, and what um, what would you suggest also, you know, uh, in, in addition to that, to um, maybe practices or things that you do to just, you know, to help relax the, the body or, you know, because there's obviously the, the body is also... Um, you know, triggered at this time too. So as you said, the, you know, you, and you portrayed it very well, you know, when the dog is, you know, it, it feels very tense and scared and the body gets, you know, into survival mechanism. Is there something, and just imagine where you're there with your partner now, you know, that's a whole other thing. So what can you do to kind of send the message to the to the nervous system to uh, relax? That's a great, great question. Uh, a fully loaded question. Uh, and the reason it's fully loaded is because there are, uh, there are so many different things you can do uh, and none of them are easy. And, and the reason that they're, they're easy to do, but they're not they're not instantly effective very often because it's kind of like if you, if you've ever dealt with a, a traumatized dog, you can tell it to sit, but it doesn't listen to you. And so when you're in a triggered position, you can, you know, you can put all sorts of safety nets in place, but when you're triggered, like the dog is going to dig up a hole in the backyard, whether you tell it not to, you know, to sit or not. So the first thing I can say is, especially, um, in light of being on this, this live is meditation and meditation is the fitness. It is one of, it is one of the, it is one of the forms of fitness. And, and what I tell people, because a lot of people come to meditation and they don't quite understand it. And they think that it's just this way to like, you know, calm themselves down, which it is, but it's moreover mental fitness, mental and emotional fitness. You're strengthening your ability to have command of your mind, to, to stay in your higher seat of consciousness and tell the dog, I know this is scary, but you stay, stay. So when it comes to you're in a situation with a partner and you're triggered, uh, you know, so th this is where conscious dating and conscious relationships come into play. So <clears throat> There are all these techniques that you can do. There are all these different things. I mean, like, you know, from I, I tr through my program, you create a, uh, like a master version uh, of yourself. We create, are you familiar with, you're familiar with Carl Jung, I imagine? Yeah, somewhat. A little bit. 
so Carl Jung's a kind of grandfather of modern psychology, and he has these archetypal, um, this archetypal work he does where you basically have all these different personalities, kind of like we're all multiple personalities. And so in my program, we create your highest version of you, your king self, your master self. And, and so we create this identity. And then we also create what's called your shadow self. And you may have heard of like shadow work, um, but that's yeah. kind of like your, your ego. So we created, we create an identity and my, my shadow's name is actually Shady James. So, uh, so Shady James is this terrified, anxious, you know, cigarette smoking, alcohol abusing, you know, skinny, frail, nervous, panicked, messy version of me. Uh, excuse me, I, I got a little bit of lunch left in my mouth. Um, and, and he's the one who would be completely humiliated that I just did that. Shady James would. Uh, then there is my, my highest self, which actually his name is Chief James. So they both have James as their name. And Chief James is my calm, centered, collected, highest self. And he always operates from his highest seat of consciousness. So, so this is just one of like probably a hundred exercises you go through in my program where I, we create this for yourself so that when you get in a situation, whether it's with your partner, a stranger, a driver on the road, whatever, you're constantly thinking, okay, who's, who's at my wheel right now? Is it Shady James? And is he like all over the road? Or is it Chief James who's calmly slowing down, breathing, waiting, pausing? And, and so what I tell people is like, you know, we create it. So say if like you went through this with me, Ade, we would come up with King Ade and, you know, whatever your shadow's name is. And so I, so if you were having an issue with your, your wife or your, I don't know, are you, are you married? And, and actually Ade means King. It's a Nigerian name. <laughs> awesome, man. That is so cool. So King King. Um, so, you know, I would say to you, how would, how would King Ade handle it? What would King Ade do? What would King Ade do if his wife came up to him and said, I think you suck today. You know, like, I, I can't believe, can, I, why would you do that? Why did you do that? You, how could you do that with the kids? You put them in danger. You know, that's the kind of thing that us guys are like, what? Uh, uh, you know, and then we feel like we need to defend. But what we recognize as our highest self is we're complete. There's nothing to defend. We're already whole. So we would just go, okay, I understand. I want to understand where you're coming from. How can I, how can I help you to feel safe? Okay, now you, you just touched on a really great, um, you know, a, a great topic that I think a lot of people can identify with this. Uh, when you said, um, what are you defending? Because most, many of us, if not most of us get defensive at times. And so, you know, like just when you were doing that, 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 um, that scenario with my wife and me, you know, um that that feeling of what comes up for me is this feeling of th being threatened like yeah. something feels feels threatened and sometimes there's i just am in reaction mode like right away like just jump, jump right into it and and for me a lot of the times it's the defensive is like the way that i do it is like shut down or, you know, go into my whole spiritual identity sort of thing. I'm just not going to react. I'm just going to walk away. You know, she is doing this or that. And I'll, but really, I'll just go into silent scorn and yeah. punish with not saying anything. But inside, you know, feeling very frightened and not, not looking at what, you know, what's going on, you know, and just like you said, you know, all of these are mechanisms to, for me to protect this, this thing that's, you know, feeling threatened, you know, this identity or whatever you want to call it. Yep. <clears throat> that's right. So, um, you know, what I do in this very like existential breakdown and you find, you'll find this in, in my ebook and I, and it's, it's a tough one. It was a tough one to write because I had to take a, a huge body of work and, and, you know, boil it down and then 
translate it in, in kind of like common layman's terms, because a lot of these concepts can be pretty radical for people at first. But what I basically do is I have them, I have them dissect who they really are and what's really going on. And one of the ways I do that is, <clears throat> you know, I say, <clears throat> well, when you look at what you and I are, Ade, when you look at what every human is, we are a, we are comprised of 11 elements, 11 elements from the periodic table, 99% of which are only six elements, 65% are water. So we're basically water creatures. We don't look like it, but that's what we are. We're made of water and, and we are, we are never for one moment, the same person from the instant we're up a single cell until the, the day that we die, we are never the same person. We're constantly changing. So then what happens is you start to look at that and, <clears throat> and you think, well, what is it that I'm defending? It's, it's almost like you're defending the wind. You know, you're defending something that's always changing. So how in the hell can you defend that? Like what, what on earth are you even defending? Because it's always changing. And, and one of the things, you know, like if you go read some of my blog posts on my, my Facebook page, actually, like uh, I'm going to censor myself. I, I use a fair amount of uh, cursing because uh, I like to put the impact behind it. And I recognize that one of the reasons cursing is so frowned upon by a lot of people is because of their judgments, their preconceived notions about right and wrong. And what I know, and another thing that I teach people is that words, when you think about it, all that words really are, are sounds that we're making with our mouth that humans have given meaning to in order to describe things. But again, everything that we describe is basically like describing the wind. So, so what, what ends up happening is, is I, shoot, I'm sorry, I'm getting all of these people uh, reaching out to me right now. Um, so what I, what I do is I, I break it down for them and have them think about that. And <clears throat> I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, I... I have them. Where well, you were talking about the um, what we're protecting when when we're feeling uh, threatened, and and uh, that it's there's nothing really there. It's kind of like protecting something that's always uh, changing. Uh, yes, you, you you jog my memory. Thank you. So what I was going to tell you is there's this article I wrote that that is uh, or more of a blog post <clears throat> that you can go find on my Facebook page. It's public. That's titled "There is nothing effing wrong with you." And, and, feel, and feel free to curse here. That's fine. <laughs> okay. okay. So it's called, there's nothing fucking wrong with you. And the reason that it's called that is because I have done a deep, deep exploration in my own self in making sense of why it is that I have felt like there's things wrong with me. And what I've come to recognize is the only reason that I think that there are things wrong with me is because that's what other people have told me. And then what I realized is like, well, who the hell gave them the authority to say what was right and wrong? And I realized, well, somebody else told them and then somebody else told them and somebody else told them. And so, so like somewhere way down the line, people started saying, well, this is right and that's wrong. But you and I both know that in any given instance, something that can be right can easily be viewed as wrong and, and, and both ways. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, so, so perhaps you don't get it right with your kids and your wife gets upset. You can know that in the context of what she's talking about, she's probably right. Like, you know, forgetting to, um, you know, forgetting to, uh, let's see, give them a bath or, or remind them to take a bath would be wrong of you in the context of humans need to stay clean and you need to teach your kids to be clean. But it could also be looked at as right in that perhaps <clears throat> it empowered them to realize daddy didn't give us a bath. Maybe we should go do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they, your, your negligence actually helped them. And, and people, again, the unconsciousness of humans tends to forget to look at the other side of things. So what I teach people is there's nothing fucking wrong with you. You've just learned that. And so then it feels really relieving to go, gosh, like 
nothing that I can do is wrong. Like, yes, yes, you can do things in society that are wrong and, and get yourself thrown in jail or worse. So you have to know the rules, but you can know in your heart that if you trip, if you forget, if you say something that doesn't go over well with your wife or whoever, that there's really nothing to defend. And the best thing that you can do, and this is where I, I'm going to parlay this back into the conscious dating and conscious relationships and communication. The best thing that you can do is you can get completely committed to understanding where the other person is coming from. So <clears throat> what I talk about in my, my program is that uh, conscious dating and conscious relationships go like this. So most people, most people are very selfish about their relationships. They get in a relationship so they can feel better. They get in a relationship so they can feel safe. They get in a relationship so they can be complete. It's a hard one for people to admit, but on a deeper level, they don't really give a shit about their partner. It's all about them. It's all about what their partner can do for them. And understandably, because they're scared to death. They're scared to death of not being okay. Well, what ends up happening is you start to realize as you wake up that you have missed out on so much richness in your relationships with the people you care the most about. And I have to watch myself because I get choked up when I talk about this because it's been me. And what, what happens is you're so constantly concerned with you, 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 me, me, me. How is, how can I get my point across? Am I being understood? Am I, am I getting my needs met? And in turn, you're not really there for the other person. You are physically, but, but spiritually and emotionally, you're not. And so what I talk about with conscious dating, conscious relationships, and conscious communication is this. Conscious dating is like, so what conscious dating is, is, is going into dating with the intention of waking up and, and doing that with another person. So finding someone, going out and dating and, and meeting someone you connect with that you like, and then the first moment something triggers you, the first time something doesn't go right, that's your opportunity to get conscious and go, okay, I'm gripping to an idea in my mind that is like I'm gripping to the fucking wind. Like I need to let go of this idea because if I hold on to this idea, it has the potential of ruining this thing that's happening with me and this other person. Like we've hit an impasse. And now this impasse is up to at least one of us letting go. If both of us hold on tight, we might force ourselves into the relationship. What I tell a lot of people is they go into relationships while they're still in the gym. I'm like, you didn't finish the workout. You got to get in shape first. Then you enter a conscious relationship. So what happens is like my wife and I, for example, we, we were only partly conscious. We weren't aware of all this stuff when we got together, but we were close. And so, you know, at first we started testing each other, like, hey, look at my skeletons in the closet. Like, I'm fucked up. Can you still love me? And, and she would do that to me too. And, and then I went home, you know, after the first couple of days, I'm like, I don't know if this is the one, like that girl's kind of fucked up. Like, I don't know if she's right for me. But what she did was she came back and she's like, I, am, I want to know more. Tell me more. What are you going through? Because my, my wife is an extremely conscious person. And so she, she created space to understand me and what I was going through, which allowed me to go, okay, I'm okay to be me with this lady. Like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, I'm not going to mess it up this time by being me. Okay, sign me up. You know, and so, so we kind of let, we got in the relationship while we were still in the gym and it's kind of impossible not to, like, you're always going to be, you're going to have differences with people. But what, what happens is, is you get into this place where when you can constantly come back to remembering that you are complete, that there's nothing wrong with you, that you do not need this other person to be complete, but you get to be with this other person and experience the, the duplicity that happens of being with, with another person, it opens you up in a way that, that is, is unlike any other thing. Yeah, uh, that's, that's beautiful. And it, uh, and I, I, 
I assume to you know what what you said was was really sweet about your your wife, um, you know, holding that space for you to to be you know as you are to be authentic and to to expose those parts of yourself that you know you may have even judged yourself for and, and didn't want anybody to see because you know a lot of a lot of people you know have that and, and we try to we try to hide it. And um, so what is the importance of having that partner that, is, that does have that capacity to, um, to hold space? I know a lot of people say that, okay, I, you know, it sounds good. I'll hold space for you. You hold space for me. But when you're in the heat of the moment, and, and I'm assuming that we're not always going to hold space for each other. Sometimes one person will go unconscious for some time and, and the other person is kind of keeping the boat afloat and, and, and holding that space. So, you know, what's what's a, a sort of healthy dynamic and are there dy dynamics that don't really work? Great question. So, and, and wonderful points too. Uh, I love I love having these conversations with, with people who have, have a general understanding of it. And, <clears throat> and it's so fun to be able to, you know, to try to articulate it in a way that anyone can understand. And the answer to the question is, you know, there, there really is no like magic recipe. There's no, there's no, like, you need to get all these things a certain way and then it'll be okay. Cause it's, it's always changing. It's always different, but that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily help. So what I, what I like to say is, if only one person in the relationship is conscious, they had better be a Zen master. <laughs> so, because what ends up happening is if you have a tendency to fall asleep, to go unconscious, which we all do, like it's, it's just part of the human game, uh, you're going to wind up getting triggered. And if you can't wake back up, you're going to probably wind up doing something that that you regret or that ruins the relationship. You know, we get angry, we get defensive. And if we don't wake up and realize there's nothing to defend, one thing leads to another, a month goes by and you cheat or you, you know, or you, you say, I want a divorce. The ideal is that, so what I like to say to people is that, that, mo you know, most people get into relationships to be safe, to be complete, you know, to feel better, blah, blah, blah. But really the, the purpose of relationships, in my opinion, the true purpose of relationships is growth and contribution. It's growth. It's the ability to, you, you, you are capable of growing much more rapidly and robustly in relation with someone else than you are on your own. Uh, I mean, we, we are all, whether we like it or not, in, I, I just did a video about this, we're all in a relationship, whether we like it or not, we're in a relationship with the rest of the world, just by being alive, we're in relation to everything else. But when you are in a committed um, partnership with someone, what ends up happening is there are all these opportunities to butt heads. There's all these opportunities to piss each other off, to figure out how to deal with the ups and downs and highs and lows of being human. And in all those opportunities, if you got two people who at least know well enough to put, you know, so like one of the things that my wife and I do is we have all kinds of fail safes. I mean, my phone is loaded with reminders. That's what I've been stopping. Reminders saying, you know, be here now. Don't forget you're complete. Don't forget you have nothing to prove. You know, like I, and, and all over our house, we have little post-it notes, like trust the universe. You're not in charge. Be a good dog like all of these things to help catch us so that if we're starting to fight with one another about something, one of us can go, like I have reminders now that go, don't try to fix it. Like if she's upset, give her space. Oh, and that's so, a great one. I mean, <laughs> I loved what you said, go ahead. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's a, that one took me uh, years and, 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 and really, to part of it is like you were talking about being able to to be with myself and to you know to to breathe and, and to remind myself that that I am complete and not just remind like really experience that and yeah. and um and just go 
allow um, my partner to, to go through her, um, you know, um, whatever she needs to go to go through, you know, if she she's angry. Um, in the past, um, I would feel like that that's not acceptable, you know, for me, because I'm not safe. And oh, like, what can I do to, you know, to to fix things to to fix the situation and, and um, you know, and, and that just what ended up happening is I, you know, projected this onto my partner, and made them feel that they had to get better quickly they had to work through their anger anger you know mm-hmm. or what i would do is if they got angry i would invalidate the emotions yep. and say no just relax it wasn't a big deal you know totally. Th- this is what that person meant you know so they didn't mean they weren't being insulting you know so there's nothing to be angry about you know and do things to kind of manipulate it was just basically manipulation to get them to feel differently so that when they feel differently, they feel differently about me and then I'll be okay. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't are, work. <laughs> you are a wise man. You are a wise man. And, and I will tell you, I still do that. You know, like I find myself, uh, you know, trying to Zen master my wife when she's going through something. She is a ma- She is, she is, uh, you know, you can't hear, you will not find me talk high enough about my wife. I, I, I talk her up and, and she's worth knowing. Uh, she is someone who honors her emotions. And I will sit there and go, you know, like a guy, I'll try to fix it. And I'm like, oh, you need to not let that bother you. You need to just come on. Like, let's, you just need to, you need to breathe through it. You, you know, I start bringing in all the Zen tricks, thinking that's what she needs when she's like, no, my friend, these are valid emotions and I'm not about to repress them like you prefer to do. And, uh, and so, you know, one thing that I wanna, before we run out of time, I wanna add, because I think it's such a valuable, a valuable tool to think of that really can immediately help everyone. And it relates back to this idea of the master, the dog and the backyard. And you know, when we are, when we are in a situation where uh, where we are upset, we're triggered, um, you know, we're bothered by something. Basically, the brain is in charge. We're letting the brain be in charge. So the brain is like, this is not good. I don't like the way this is. I don't like what she's doing. You're, you're wrong. How can you say that about me? Blah, 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 whatever it is. Just know that that's your brain. You're letting your brain operate. And then the body is going along with it. The, the body's like, yeah, yeah, what the brain said. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and the body is, because the body is like, the body is commanded by the brain. They're, you know, they're, they're connected. So it's like, yeah, I'm with the brain on this one. This is fucked up. Meanwhile, the master, the soul just sits back. And he's just like, let me know when you're finished. And, and so. I love that analogy, by the way. Yeah, that, that's that's uh, you know you, you that expresses it re- perfectly. It, it really because I just that image of the soul sitting back because that's how it feels sometimes. We can go through all of this drama, all of this panic, all of this stuff, and it's just like I'm waiting, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and what's cool is it's there for you all the time. So what I do is I have this conversation in my mind, and I'm like. Hey, you guys, come on. Can we, can we work together here? Like I literally, I talk that way to myself and I'm talking to my brain and my body. And I'm like, you guys, come on, really? Are we really going to let this one like unravel us right now? Like we've all agreed that that doesn't feel very good, that that's what's causing the back aches. That's what's causing the, you know, the, the insomnia. That's what's causing us to like overeat or take, do out, drink alcohol excessively or do all these stupid things that you know causing us to get all full of cortisol and pissed off and 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 the soul can go you guys i thought we agreed on peace like come on let's do peace come on can we please do peace and they're both like oh yeah i like peace peace is better let's do peace and so it's a conversation that's worth having for the rest of your life of of reminding the the other two guys like hey 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 
slow down peace and and it sounds like the way that you're approaching it which is in the spirit of a, sort of a playful a spirit you know playful attitude rather than um you know very uh, you know because we can get into beating ourselves up and being you know doing things very strenuous and and um you know being rigid about things and i think you know just what i'm picking up from you is there's this not taking yourself too seriously and i think that is a good way to deal with that sort of brain consciousness which is seeking certainty you know it, it that's what it was developed it wants to know what's going to happen next but we're living in this as you said there's constant change and then dealing with a with a partner yeah dealing with a partner we don't know ourselves so how the heck are we you know going to assume that we're going to really know someone else you know fully you know right. so they're changing too so they're it seems like there is a lot of uncertainty which can trigger within many people I'm talk you know I could wow. speak from my own experience because I I still deal with that having a hard time with the uncertainty and not knowing what's going to what's going to happen next you know okay. is this person going to ever be not angry with me you know will I ever feel okay you know so uh and then bring into the mix cuz you go into this uh in the in the ebook step in um out of that conditioning that we've you know those habits of the way that we are to be able to um be a better man and to show up in a way that we we might not be used to I'm not like like I'm learning from your ebook cuz you know I I I don't have this uh down you know my my relationships very complicated and I still make a lot of these I'm not very uh, uh mature in, in this area I'm not very developed you know, so. very very few people are brother you're, you're <laughs> not alone yeah yeah M me me as well I act I act extremely immaturely at times and um and and so for me I uh, thank you for mentioning the ebook again because it you know this actually really brings everything full circle what inspired me to do it what inspired me to do all of this was selfishness so ultimately I wanted to feel better and and I got busy just like being a really good student which is what I've always strived to like when I when I set my mind to it I go all the way and I've even in my you know my spiritual journey learned that 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 is a trait of insecurity that that is a trait of needing to be a really good student so then I'll get a pat on the head and get that that approval that you were talking about and uh and it's been so nice to learn that and a lot harder to 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 you know to embody it um and so i wrote the book to help others but also as a reminder to myself and uh you know i i i would say that these things that we don't understand uh often are are available to us if we just slow down and uh and allow ourselves the time to think it through and 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 or have someone else teach us so like a lot of the ways i teach is using visuals metaphors pictures because i know that you know like changing that conditioning or understanding how to be with a partner so that you always keep the passion and the attraction so like that's a thing that i think a lot of people worry about as they get into a relationship and time goes by and then it starts to kind of get stale and like how do we keep that passion that attraction well it's 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 energy it's all a, it's all a dance of energy and it's all about how we carry ourselves and if we carry ourselves in a way that's really attractive and there are some things that you need to learn about what that means again like the ways that are attractive at the end of the day are safe like so uh i'm looking at the clock cuz i don't know how much time we have but i i'll i'll go into a quick example of that if you'd like to hear one yeah and if you are are you running out of time or or uh I, I okay cuz uh, cuz uh, i'm sorry oh i have a call at the hour 
So. Oh, okay. At five. At, uh, at, uh, yeah, at five exactly. Okay, uh, and the I'll let you uh, finish up what, what you wanted to go into. I I just wanted to quickly also go into the um after you you talk about you know what you wanted to talk about the yeah. non negotiables and and the vision of you know, creating, coming up with a vision that, that you want, you, you know, oh, in your I, ideal partner I and, it. and, you know, um, the vision that you have for yourself, you know, what that partner may want, you know, from you as well. Yeah, sure. I would love to. Th thank you for bringing that up. Ade. <clears throat> so what I was going to just share on the, um, you know, keeping the love alive uh, and even, even while dating the attraction game, so, you know, a lot of guys are, are, are perplexed by why women seem to be attracted to bad boys, why women, for some reason, tend to kind of like, not all women, but a lot of women kind of wind up gravitating a little bit to assholes occasionally. And, and, you know, and again, not all women, but there's a really interesting explanation for this. And it has to do with, believe it or not, safety. So even though these kind of guys, you would think on the surface are not very safe because they're bad and they're assholes. Uh, what it is, is that they carry themselves in a way that they are complete. And being a bit of an asshole means I don't care whether you like me or not. I'm complete. I'm going to be me whether you like it or not. So get on board or I don't fucking care. And that attitude on our, on a deeper energetic level is like, Ooh, that's kind of nice. Like that's a little harder to get. So we've heard the expression, we want what we can't have. And there's a thing that I coach about uh, called or it's around accessibility. And so, you know, when we're too nice, and we're too sweet and we're too there and we wait on them hand and foot and we're just so easy. We're very accessible. We basically become low hanging fruit. If you've ever heard that expression, we become low hanging fruit. Like it's just, you walk up to the tree and pick the apple. No, yeah. no effort. The thing is, is nobody wants that because that is equivalent to a lack of safety, believe it or not. It's, it's a strange thing, but it basically means like, you're so easy that you're, 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 you're willing to, to basically like make yourself available to me at any cost. And, and that energy, while in a, in a conscious relationship, in a true conscious relationship, this, this dynamic can really go away. And you both can be extremely easy for one another because you understand that you're both complete and there isn't this like two people trying to get complete by the other person and gauging the other person's behaviors as to whether or not they're complete. But when we make ourselves higher hanging fruit, when we're more difficult, when we're harder to get, the brain automatically loves the challenge. The brain automatically goes, okay, this person is valuable. They're valuable. They're higher value, which to me, that equals safety. When we're low value, when we do low value behaviors, so there's a thing in dating where they, they, they teach low value and high value. And when you're low value, it, it means that you will betray yourself for other people. You put everyone else ahead of you. And that's low value behavior. It's needy. Again, it, it's just, it just shows that like, you don't really feel complete because if you did, you wouldn't betray yourself for someone all the time. Yeah. Instead, what we do to be high value men is we, we begin to behave in ways that are like, this is who I am unapologetically. I get that you don't like certain things about me, but I don't care because I love me. And that immediately is a, an attractive quality to someone else, even though there's a little bit of like, um, you know, perhaps like dysfunction in it almost. Um, so what's interesting about it is that even if you're in a conscious relationship, it is still important that you 
are, you said this at the beginning and I loved it. The most important relationship that anyone has is with, who do you think? Yourself. Bingo. Yeah. Give, give that man a gold star. Uh, that, that is right. And so it is, it is essential that you put yourself first. And, and the reason for that is that when you are complete, you offer so much more to everyone else than when you're incomplete. So yeah. it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one where like, it's, it's actually kind of healthy, even in a marriage, even in a conscious relationship, like with my wife, I make sure that at times, and it's not even that I make sure, it's, it naturally happens. Like there are things that I love that she hates and I'm not about to stop loving those things just because she hates them. And she knows it. And as a result, she's kind of like, he's a little bit of a jerk when it comes to that. But, you know, like, I don't want him to just betray himself for me all the time. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And, and it gets them to kind of have to work out a little bit uh, th themselves. I'm not good at that. Like what I would do is I'll rationalize myself out of, well, I don't really need that. Or I don't really... Maybe, you know, like, I find that I, I do that um, a lot, you know, and, and um, my well, fruit is hanging very, too low. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there, it's again, there, it's a it's a balance game too. like when you're in a partnership, you've got to compromise that that is, there are just times where like, you know, you you can't wear your favorite bowling shirt to the to the event that her, her work is putting on because she's humiliated when you wear that bowling shirt but you know like then there are going to be times where you're like we're going out to the movies and i'm wearing the bowling shirt and you're going to have to deal with it and uh you know so that's a that's another little metaphor there but um i, I don't actually i'm not a fan of bowling shirts necessarily <laughs> but uh, so there are some some give and take and and, and you know so I'm sorry, all the assholes, their ears were perking up and, and <laughs> they're like, he's on to us. He's got he figured out our secret. Uh, so let's see, you were, you had asked me about, um, let's see, you'd asked me about the, uh, the, the non-negotiables and, uh, we kind of went in, I mean, this seems to be in, in the same vein, um, almost, um, but uh, maybe you could briefly uh, talk, uh, go into a little bit more detail about that. Sure. So it, it ties in nicely with the other thing you'd asked me about, which was creating a vision. Uh, so the first step of my program, again, it's a five-step program. The first step is clarity. And what so many of us do when we date, again, is we just go out there looking for something that's going to make us feel better. And usually we base most of our decisions on looks. And looks are definitely important. Like, you want to have attraction. If you're not attracted to your partner, like I would not, I, I don't encourage anyone who's, who's feeling like forced to be in a relationship where they really don't feel attraction to, to, to hang on to that um, because it's not fair to you or them. But well, what, well, I'm going to pause you for one second there because that, and just um, expand on, on this part, because this is, I think a lot of people can relate to this um, men and women, but you have the infatuation period. You have when, the, the, when those hormones take hold, and maybe you can relate this back to the brain, the body, and the master analogy. You know, how do you um, deal with that sort of situation? Because a lot of, a lot of times we're making decisions based on, off of that. You know, right. those hormones like flood the system, and you're just, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, the, the thing that's important to know is that while, while you have the master, the brain and the body are, you know, equally relevant and, and equally important. And they play, you know, they're the vehicle that we experience this life through. So they have a say in it. And what you just talked about is, is um, it, it is largely a, um, a product of the brain and the body. You know, the brain and the body have, 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 uh, developed a personality based on all kinds of countless um, variables from your genetics to the experiences you've had to the things you've learned to love and, and, and not love. 
And I think the souls involved in there a little bit as well. In fact, arguably, like there are things like soulmates where you have these souls that are out there looking for one another. Uh, and I believe that to a degree and I don't to a degree, but, um, you know, ultimately we have this collection of things that make us attracted to some people and not to other people. Uh, and then attracted to some people in the beginning. And then over time we kind of get used to them and we've had like the same flavor of ice cream for 20 years. And after a while, like we just want a, a new flavor of ice cream kind of, and those are all normal human things. Um, what is fascinating about it is that when you can become more conscious of, of those factors and understand that it is this um, interplay between the three, the master, the, the, the mind and the body, working together to decide how they perceive and experience the world, you can greatly impact the chemistry that you have with other people. So for example, in all of my other relationships, and I've been in quite a few, uh, I found that I got in the relationship and I was really attracted to her at first. Actually, there was a few relationships I got into where I wasn't attracted to her. And those were the hardest because the whole time I was like, I don't really want to be in this. I know I'm betraying myself, but like, I don't want to be alone. And, and it was a great learning experience, but it, you know, it, it wound up crashing and burning, but all my other relationships, very infatuated up front over time that wears off. And then before I know it, I'm like, I don't even find this person attractive anymore. Now, I can't say for certain that that won't happen to me with my wife because we've only been together for four years. But what I can say is that by this time in every other relationship I've had, I had started to lose attraction for my partner. In this relationship, however, she gets hotter every day, my man. Like I am so turned on by my wife. And the reason for that, I believe, is that I have learned to see her differently and in such a way that's opened up parts of me that I didn't really know existed and caused me to continually like find her really juicy. Like I really, I really, you know, uh, I, I'm working in tandem going, okay, guys, what do we want to think about this lady? And, and what has also helped me is that my wife, you know, ha, is doing the same thing. And what we also have both done that is uh, a little more extreme by some people's measure is that we made an agreement earlier on that if we were capable of being able to create some sort of extremely healthy foundation that at some point in our lives, we would explore the concept of having another partner and, and remaining married, but doing that polyamorous thing that I frankly have been a big skeptic of most of my life. And most of the people that I know that have done it, I felt like have wound up, you know, with a whole lot of heartache and destruction and their original relation falls apart. And so we've been very delicate about it, but for some reason, knowing that that, that is a possibility has helped my humanness to be okay with not being in such a hurry to like get another flavor of ice cream. I realize that a lot of people don't have that option um, because it, it goes against their, their morals and their ideals. Um, and so then what I would say is that it really is, it's really critical that you are working together, mind, body, spirit, to evaluate, perceive the whole picture, to perceive, perceive your partner, to go, how do we want to see this person? Do we want to, like, when we start to notice ourselves feeling less attractive, like, okay, let's work on that. What needs to happen here? And like, one of the things my wife and I do is we take time apart from each other. When we're starting to feel like we're a little bit driving each other nuts, like I go on a camping trip for four days, or she's, you know, gone for a week and, and, you know, we, we take time away from each other and that helps to like create space, 
build some, you know, we miss each other a bit. Um, it's a complicated one that I don't have like a, I don't have a bulletproof answer to other than that, that it's so important to really be working together to evaluate, to, to know that you're in charge of how you experience this other person. Yeah, that's, that, that's great. And, and I think it, it also goes back to that and, and we'll wrap up soon uh, that feeling um, content with, within your, within yourself, you know, so, so there's, and also the understanding that, that, you know, everything comes and goes, there, there's going to be, there's always these uh, changes, you know, so, so we don't, so the, you know, if, if we're seeking pleasure all the time, we got to know that pain is going to, is going to come with that as well. You can't have, and you talk about that too, you know, the, the, the law of opposites. And yes. so uh, yes. we're going to wrap up. I know you have a call at, at, um, at the hour. And I just wanted to say, this is like, I feel like part of why I did, I think this ended up being like a free coaching, coaching session <laughs> for me, because I got so much out of it. And like I told you uh, before, you know, that your ebook really resonated with me and, and um, you know, and I, I'm sure it will with a lot of people. It's, it's once you start reading it, like once I started reading it, it just just flow very well. Oh, like you. everything just like a question would come up and the answer would. OK, you know, you lead people down the process in a way that's easy to digest and understand. And, you know, I really enjoyed it. Um, well, thank you. Where, so is is that ebook available, or when will will it be available? And how can people get in touch with you for sessions and and things of that nature? Sure. Th thank you for asking. Thank you for your for your beautifully kind words, Ade. I I really appreciate knowing that because it it's always you know it's a vulnerable thing to to write something and put it out there and 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 wonder whether or not it it's connecting with people. So that means a lot. Um, it is not. It's not published yet, um, and uh, I'm working on that. So what what is going to happen first? The first way that the ebook will be available uh, will be through. I, I'm using it as uh, I'm using it as a Facebook ad actually, and so I'm I'm giving it away. Uh, but I'm I'm giving it away in exchange for a name, a phone number, and an email that I can reach out to that person and say, Hey, tell me what you're going through. I saw you got my ebook. You know, here's what the coaching looks like in tandem with that. And, and that's sort of the exchange. Um, I would say for now, if people are interested in the ebook and, and they want to get their hands on a copy, they can reach out to me directly through Facebook and, uh, and I'd be glad to give a copy. And then my intentions are to publish it and, and to try to get it like maybe up on Amazon, uh, you know, somewhere and it will be a nominal fee um, that I charge for that. But, but as far as, yeah, as far as sessions with me, as far as working with me, um, you know, I, I'm a fan of giving away a lot of free coaching. So, so I try to do that up front. Um, and, uh, and so if people are going through stuff and they want some advice, I say, just reach out to me on Facebook, send me a Facebook messenger uh, message. And, and that's right where I do it. And, and I mean, on, on any given day, I'm talking to 20 plus men and, and occasionally some women as well saying like, well, have you tried this? Have you thought about that? You know, like, don't, don't give up on the relationship just yet. There's hope, uh, that kind of thing. So that's great. And I'm sure you're great at it. And like just having this conversation with you, you're really easy, to, you know, to talk to. I felt very comfortable. So, you know, that's, that's great. You have, and you have this, um, spiritual background that, you know, you embody as well. So, well, thank uh, you, man. So, so I'm just um, also uh, I'll give you a copy of this video. I do some editing, cool. you know, like an intro and an exit with music and stuff like that. Perfect, man. I'd love yes. that. So if you give me your email, I'll send you the uh, the video file. You can upload it. Do whatever you want with it. Cool, man. Okay. This, yeah, that's fantastic. I was hoping for that. So thanks. Yeah. So I'm going to do some closing remarks. Uh, again, folks, this is Guided Meditations and More. My name is Ade Richardson, and uh, today's guest is Andrew Eastman. And um, 
We were talking about relationships, how to have conscious and healthy relationships and and uh, relationships that are exciting and fun and filled with passion and um, and how to have a relationship with yourself. You know, that's what a lot of what the conversation ended up being about. And I think that's a, an essential part. If you have any questions or comments for Andrew, um, how could they uh, get in touch with you? Uh, you know, the best way to, to reach me is to just find me on Facebook. You can just look up Andrew okay. James Eastman, uh, send me a Facebook messenger request and, and uh, I'm always available. I'm kind of a uh, always on the clock sort of guy. So reach out anytime. Great. And I'll add the link to the description of this video. And if you have any comments or questions for me, leave it below the video. You can also send me a direct message uh, to my inbox. And um, again, this is a, also a daily um, guided meditation, 7.30 a.m. Eastern time. So please join us for that. And uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, be blessed and um, be well.